How you doing, my friend? How's life going? Pretty good. Good, good, good. You have a chance to think about uh, what we were talking about yesterday? Yes, and with all this and with how most of my school is reacting. Yeah. How, okay, wait, you have no, as they do, no way of changing what you feel like. You don't, they won't change, these people won't change. Just because most people, it's impossible to change people. Where will we come I to an agreement? You changed. Yeah. <laughs> you you can change. But most kids, no, we can all change. Millennials. What if we showed you some videos of students who came out like cursing us out, and then by the end of the conversation, we're like, "Wow, you're right. <laughs> this is right." And thank you so much for being out here. What if I showed you a video of like this project Frontlines? Because we're not the only ones who do this. Yeah. This going on in a high school in Oklahoma, for example and uh, uh, a black student coming out and saying, why are you protesting my school, right? And the, the abolitionists were like, we're not protesting your school, we're kind of lighting up the darkness, we're showing what's wrong, we're showing the evil, and we wanna do this for the rising generation, so on and so forth. And then he gave him the same argument from history that I gave you yesterday. And then the black student was like, wow, he's right. This is changing hearts and this is changing minds because it's not about us. It's about truth in general. Are you telling me there's nobody in that school right there that is believing a lie that would accept truth? We're probably a lot. Yeah, and so that's what we're doing, man. And, and not only are we doing that, we're calling you, brother, because I can see it in your eyes. You're a man who cares about justice. I'm a man that cares about justice. I'm yeah. a man that cares about the truth. I'm a man that yeah. really cares about yeah. being right and civil. Yeah, and what is civil about slaughtering 60,000 babies in the state of Texas under the guise of law. What was civil about in stealing a man based on the color of his skin and saying, hey, my plantation, my prerogative, you can't change my mind. And if you could change my mind, you'd have to do it through some other way. Right? You see what I mean? Yeah. I actually, that makes very much sense. I've actually seen yeah. it like that in a sense. I yeah. know portion to me cannot do it because with how I see a lot of you know how many people said that <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah 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 I mean can't, can't do what like come out here and stand with us no no I oh can't. I thought you meant that can't you, abortion. oh like, right you're saying you can't yeah we discussed abortion. that yesterday yeah no we discussed that yesterday yeah it's just like and I understand I wish more people kind of had that view but I know Whereas everyone else is going to be not having, and no one can be have the same view for some apparent reason because everyone's different and special. Special. And, uh, you hold this for me for a second? I'm going to hold this one. <laughs> we're putting pressure on him because we uh, he doesn't want to hold it <laughs> I, I, I like to stay uh, neutral and everything because <laughs> there is no neutrality there is, see see the bible says and this is i mean kind of the root of what christians why christians don't really fight evil the bible says like when you think about a spiritual man a lot of times you think about somebody who prays a lot, about somebody who like maybe talks to people about Jesus, who worships in their own house or something like that. You say, oh, that person's spiritual. But the Apostle Paul says, the spiritual man judges all things and judges between good and evil based on the covenant of God and that there is no neutrality. Every situation has a good and has an evil answer in the world. And there is the responsibility of the Christian to tear down evil and to replace it with good. And it's not about me, it's not about Todd, it's not about Matt, it's about the Spirit of God leading us. And that's why it's not our standard, that's why it's His Word. That's why if we remove the Word of God, all we have is our thoughts, our opinions, our wants, our desires, and we see what happens in the world when the human opinion is allowed to run free, unchecked, and institute human laws in society. See, Martin Luther King said that an unjust law is no, no law at all. Now, the reason he could say that is because that there is a law above all laws, and that's the law of God. See, if there's no law of God, then Martin Luther King's statement makes no sense. It's just 
who can enslave who or who can get there without truth this is a, this is a statement that you should really remember brother without truth all there is is power and control if there's no truth all there is is power and manipulation and what you said like i can prove to you you don't actually believe what you just said like you said i like to be neutral on all things but if a girl was getting raped over there on the side of the road and, a, and your buddy said let's go help her he'd be like no i want to stay neutral on all things like your justice, your sense of justice would be want to correct evil, right? In that sense, if I saw action done, uh -huh. but if there is, say, with the whole red and blue thing, uh, with Democrats well, and Republicans. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. That's what I mean with... Like, They're really on the same team, like, throwing a political football back and forth. Like, I see, yeah. When I do something like that kind of neutral, that's what I mean by neutral, because... Well, what about this, though? I mean, how could we be neutral in, 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 in regard to that? Especially, especially when it's made legal by decree of man. That's when we need, as Christians, to rise up and to speak out. Imagine if, look, there's supposedly 80 million just evangelical Christians in the United States of America alone. Now, evangelical sort of means just believing the right things about the Bible and God and things. Like just, you know, not, not saying I'm a Christian, but I believe all religions are equal. Like evangelical in the broad sense. 80 million. Imagine if 10 million of them were running around doing this. Imagine if 5 million. Imagine if 3 million. Imagine if 500,000. Imagine if 100,000. Imagine if 50,000. Imagine if 20,000. You know how many people there are running around doing this? I'm, I'm going to say a lot because it's in multiple areas, not just here. Yeah, it seems bigger than it is, but it's really 20 people kind of right now running around the United States that are doing this as abolitionists. Now, there's pro-lifers that do it, but the way they do it is they kind of compromise with human laws and they try to make laws to kind of like shut down abortion clinics based on like regulations and try to treat abortion as health care. Like when we stand outside of the abortion mill, sometimes we'll have like a, 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 a murder minded mother go in there and they're about to kill their children, a ch child. And they'll say something like, uh, and we'll say, hey, don't, you know, don't murder your child. Come back, come talk to us. You know, let, let us help you. And they'll say something like, well, uh, my baby doesn't have a heartbeat yet. Or, well, my baby can't feel pain yet. And the reason they say that is because of pro-lifers who are trying to do this the wrong way. See, we're not pro-life. We're abolitionists. We seek to abolish abortion as murder. Just like the abolitionists of slavery, like William Lloyd Garrison and people back there in the 1800s, they sought to abolish slavery as man stealing and so that where they that old movement fought against the american colonization society who were just seeking to kind of regulate slavery and push it into the 1900s and resettle slaves in liberia and things like that they had to put an end to the american colonization society more than anything else like so we actually if you think like we're out here like you know at high schools mostly i mean high schools are super important super important but one of the most important things is actually shutting down the pro-life movement itself. Those, those, and a lot of Christians in it who think you can just sort of like heal the wound lightly and regulate the uh, abortion out of society by passing one law after another. And they've been doing it for like 44 years. They've been doing it for like 44 years and we still have, our country actually has less stringent laws on abortion in terms of the actual time when you can kill your children than Western Europe does. And we are supposedly like the beacon of Western civilization and Christianity. You see, Christianity needs to, needs to actually be Christianity in this country for something like this to, to end. That's why we call the church to repent. That's why we're outside the high schools, stuff like that. What are the kids, are the kids saying anything about us out there? Are they talking about it? They, well, if you claim to be not pro-lifers, that's what the whole message is being portrayed as because anything that's, yeah. any, that's pro-choice is pretty much looking like pro-life. Right. To them, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, because, yeah. well, are they are they talking about it a little bit? Yes, in there? most are with your idea of saying they like they don't they are against abortion, but in the sense that they are pro life with yeah. them. They are the pro life people, and most are pro choice because my school is somewhat liberal. Yeah. Mo most is, but not all of it because uh, right. like theater theater kids are yeah. mostly liberal, but like most of the uh, jocks are conservative kind of people and then just like most people are just annoyed with uh why are they, they don't like some people are like why are you uh, protesting outside of our school and they're just like i came over here i was like what are these signs saying because i couldn't read it that fast yeah 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 so i just wanted to actually look most so people the kids agitated some are some are just like i get your movement 
I get it, and it's a common uh, idea. What about the teachers, the principals? Are they uh, sending they're just emails or just telling the kids to not talk? Or they're just not really involved. Uh, the teachers are just looking at it, just like, oh, huh, okay. I mean, do you guys have the literal right to stand out here? I mean, you're not really doing anything wrong. We've had like history teachers come out before and say, "Oh, I'm going to show you a modern day abolitionist." This is what abolitionism looks like today, you know. So I actually come out because they recognize us. History teachers? Yeah. Oh. Because there's abolitionists in the past. So if you study abolitionism, yeah, I, I saw the website. Yeah. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. I saw the uh, the last one on that little pamphlet. Yeah. Uh, 